Well, hi there. A little while back, we had a special to-do on Instagram, and that involved people wearing our Rad Clint's Reptile shirts, asking us awesome questions with the promise that they could show up right here on Clint's Reptiles. And today, we're gonna have the first of these videos. So what's our first question? First question from KN Corcoran 81. Oh, KN Corcoran 81, you are the best. Got to hold an Argent Argentine tegu for the first time last weekend and wearing my Clint's Reptiles Gus Gus shirt, no less. So here's my question, Clint. What do you think is the most interesting trait that has evolved over time in reptiles? Wow, that is a good question. And I gotta tell you, I loved that picture when I saw it, the picture of you with the Gus Gus and Penny shirt on, actually holding an Argentine black and white tegu, one of the best pictures I've ever seen. But your question is also fantastic. And that is a hard one because there are so many cool attributes that have evolved in reptiles. But I can tell you the one that puts the biggest smile on my face. It's actually a smile almost as big as the smile that is permanently on the face of this organism. And that is the neck of the Mata Mata turtle. To explain to you why I think this is so cool, I gotta begin with fish. Fish, as it turns out, are difficult to grab with your face. Well known fact. And a large percentage of all of the organisms on Earth that eat fish manage to get fish into their face using something called suction feeding, which is just essentially, generally speaking, they've got kind of a, a small mouth that they can suddenly make big, and that creates a vacuum and sucks all this water in, and they end up with the fish inside of their mouth, and it's awesome. But when vertebrate animals left the water, what happened on land was that suction feeding didn't work anymore. Uh, when you open your mouth really wide on them, nothing gets sucked in because air is nowhere near as viscous as water. As a result, suction feeding now just sucks. Uh, but there's no feeding. So organisms on land had to adapt to this totally different environment. The adaptation that allowed them to get their face to food since food would no longer come to their face was the neck, among other things. I mean, you see with amphibians, some of them shoot their tongue out and things like that. But the most successful adaptation that allowed land organisms to get their face to food since food wouldn't come to their face was the neck. And then some land organisms returned to the water, such as many groups of turtles, including the ancestors of the Mata Mata turtle. Well, upon returning to the water, they're again trying to grab fish with their face, which is hard. And they re-evolved suction feeding. But the structure that Mata Mata turtles use to do suction feeding is their neck, which they expand really quickly and it sucks fish in. And this pleases me because they use the structure that evolved because suction feeding didn't work anymore to do suction feeding. And in my personal opinion, that's the most awesome reptile adaptation of them all. Lav Trekken says, Well, hi there. It's already started to feel like fall here in Alaska. Luckily, I've got my stinking rad new hoodie from Clint's Reptiles. Our question for Clint. What are some good tips on emergency supplies for your reptiles? We all hope that natural disasters or accidents never happen. But what do you keep on hand? Thanks for sharing, and we hope to see you real soon. That hoodie looks great on you. Um, what a great question, and I just now realized that you're in Alaska, and that's a big deal. Because in Alaska, the thing I'd be the most worried about would be losing power. Now, you potentially, I don't know exactly where you live in Alaska, but you could potentially lose power for a long time. And I've heard rumors that it gets pretty dang cold in Alaska. And so if I lived in Alaska, an emergency supply I would have would be an electric generator of some sort, maybe a, a gas generator that I could use so that it doesn't get too cold where my reptiles are and they freeze. Um, you also might need this if you're in a place where it could potentially get extremely hot 
because extreme heat or extreme cold, those are gonna be a real threat to your reptiles. That is expensive though. That's an expensive thing that, you know, if it's not a major risk for you, you might not wanna invest in an electric generator. But if you don't, or even if you do, a cheaper option would be separate tubs that you could keep each of your reptiles in temporarily should you need to relocate them, like if you need to evacuate. Even if your house is just getting really cold or really hot and you need to take them to a friend's house or even just in your car or to a hotel, somewhere where they can get out of that extreme heat or extreme cold, because those are gonna be the biggest short-term threats to your reptile should there be some sort of a disaster barring a flood or something that floods your reptile room. So be prepared either to keep the temperatures acceptable in that room or to evacuate those reptiles if need be. That would be my biggest tip. Great question. This comment comes from Full Force Virus. Razzy is mad and trying to eat the couch because I got a shirt with the wrong kind of giant lizard. My question for Clint's reptiles is, what are your favorite things that aren't technically designed for reptiles, but come in handy for them regardless? Mine are Vaseline and cat litter boxes. The litter boxes are for this dude's bath because he knows how to unplug the drain. That's a really great question because I am, especially uh, my wife and I are really good at DIY sort of things. And so there are some things that we use a lot with our reptiles. Some of my favorites would be things like dollar store bowls from the dollar store. You know, they, they sell all kinds of great pet bowls there that maybe some of them aren't designed for pets, but doesn't mean they don't work. I also really like Rubbermaid tubs, both that we use in snake racks. Some reptiles, you know, outside of snake racks even do well in tubs. And uh, I really like the Rubbermaid all access tubs. We'll include links to all of these things down in the description, but these all access tubs make really great crested gecko enclosures. Just, they're awesome. I also like hemostats. Hemostats are actually made for closing off blood vessels during surgery and battlefield operations, but they do make fantastic feeding tongs when you're feeding snakes, and I don't like getting my hands too close to feeding snakes, so hemostats are great. And I have an honorable mention, which are going to be heat bulbs for baby chickens. I say this as an honorable mention only because technically, as you may be aware, chickens are reptiles, so it's not something that's not meant for reptiles, just strange avian reptiles. Good question, I loved it. All right, so this question comes from The Drop Podcast 40K, and she says, this is our beardy Gorn. We'd like to get a silky female beardy, and we're wondering, mm -hmm if it would be possible to breed her to a normal beardy. All right. Gorn is beautiful, by the way. Uh, and that is a great and really important question. Many of you may not know what a silky bearded dragon is, but a silky bearded dragon is homozygous for the leatherback allele. If, if you don't know what I mean by homozygous, we've got an excellent genetics video that you should check out right now and then come back here. But. If you already know what I mean by homozygous, it just means that it's got two copies of this allele. And as a result, they have either micro scales or just no scales. Effectively, they're scaleless bearded dragons. They look smooth, kind of like a dry salamander. And that causes an issue during breeding for females in particular, because during breeding, males tend to bite on quite a lot to the female, both to reposition her and just to hold on during mating. And that's normally fine because they've got scale armor that protects them for the most part from the very sharp teeth that bearded dragons have. However, for silkies, the female tends to get really, really injured by the male during breeding. And so I personally would not recommend breeding a silky female at all. Uh, if you do, what you can expect is 100% leatherback bearded dragons coming from a cross between a silky and a normal bearded dragon. But if you're going to do this, I would recommend that the male be the silky and not the female. Uh, leatherbacks, alternatively, seem to do just fine 
during mating because they've still got scales. They're much smoother, they're smaller scales, but they seem to be protected. And that's actually how you get silkbacks, is you either breed a leatherback female to a silky male or to a leatherback male. This comes from Pawas Pets. I received my, well hi there, shirt from Clint's Reptiles. It's absolutely adorable and it feels good to support someone who so clearly cares about the animals he's trying to share information about. If you haven't checked out Clint's YouTube channel, please go visit. That's awesome. No question, but what an awesome uh, recommendation to your friends. I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Hillary Austin RDH says, will you do a video on Colombian tegus, Clint's Reptiles? Oh, that's a great question. We probably will. Uh, really, the hardest thing is just we'll, we'll try to find an adult that is nice enough that we can keep it right here so you can see what an adult is like. That is a bit of a challenge, though, because temperamentally they're not quite as nice as the Argentine tegus. We will cover them. They can be great. It's just not as easy as having an Argentine tegu. Or arguably as cool. This comes from Dragon Bluffs. For those interested in reptiles and aren't already subscribed to Clint's YouTube channel, I urge you to do so. It's a source of information I trust, and Clint obviously enjoys providing it. Bought a shirt and a hoodie, and they are both some of my new favorites. I'm joined by one of my reptile babies, Bentley. My question for Clint is this. We all love taking care of our reptile buddies, but sometimes we're a little over eager and soon realize we've accidentally been overfeeding. Once this happens, how do we go about getting our reptile to a healthier weight? Lizards in particular, as my leopard gecko Mango, is getting a bit tubby and I've read so much conflicting information online. That is a great question because that is something that can absolutely happen if you're taking really great care of your reptiles because you do want to make sure they're getting enough to eat and honestly feeding a reptile is one of the most fun things about keeping a pet reptile but you can get carried away or they can get carried away with eating and so this is this is a real problem people run into uh, these recommendations may seem obvious but they really are the best ways to get their weight down for reptiles like bearded dragons especially but even leopard geckos those animals can eat a variety of different foods and so look into foods that are lower in calories than the ones they've been eating that would be one option and so feed them a lower calorie diet. Another option, if they don't eat different foods, would be just to feed them smaller portions of their foods, and then also make sure that they've got adequate space to get exercise in their enclosures. Um, really, that's, that's gonna be the key, and if you do this, and you just keep it up, you know, eventually their, their weight's gonna start to come down, you can get them to a really ideal weight, and figure out the perfect balance to keep them there. What a great question. This comes from Hoggy Charles and Human. Woohoo! My Clint's Reptile shirt came in along with my notebook I ordered from Redbubble with my hognose design. So my question for Clint's Reptiles is, other than Gus Gus, which of your scaly companions would you say you're most attached to? That is a great question because you know I love Gus Gus. And I actually spent a long time thinking about which one is next in line that I love the most and the answer has got to be this girl this is Amber she's my Central American boa and I just love her there's just something so special about a big snake hug and if I could only keep one snake it'd have to be her right. another comment from the drop podcast 40k this is our baby boa Scarlet and our cinnamon ball python Ellie we don't have a question about them, but wanted to shout it out with our noodle shirt that we love, love, love your channel, Nate and Teresa. Nate and Teresa, you guys are awesome. Uh, I love the shirts. I love your boa. I love your ball python. You guys are great. Thank you for the shout out to us. Here's a shout out back to you. You guys rock. It has been so much fun getting to see you guys, getting to hear from you guys, and getting to answer your awesome questions. We want to do this again. And, and you've probably noticed, merch is currently available. So check that out. we got a link down in the description if you haven't seen that. We want to see you in our shirts. We want to see you on Instagram. We want to see your questions. 
and we want to see you in the next one of these question and answer videos. As always, like and subscribe, click the little bell so that you get a notification when you show up in our video, and we hope to see you real soon. Literally. Of course, rad clinch reptile shirts. Today we're gonna to answer several of the so let's see. How do I do what did I say? I don't know. Uh they say got to hold in Okay, I gotta say this. <laughs> I'm not good at this. Someone else say it. <laughs> <laughs> Reptile emoji. Heart emoji. I almost clapped after you read it. Yay! <laughs> That's the most awesome reptile adaptation of them all. Cry with excitement. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite stories. Oh, my well, for starters, looking at your picture, your pet's grumpiness may have nothing to do with the shirt you're wearing. Shade. It's on them right off the start. <laughs> no. Well, okay. <gasps> Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Hey, Hoggy... What? Just a second. We're getting... What the... Big yawn. Yawn? I hope so. <laughs> Aww. Aww, it looks like a yawn. <laughs> so cute. She hasn't eaten for a while. She's so. like, I was... Smooth. I wasn't worried about the worst. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, you were gonna be smelling so bad. Would the worst have been him, uh, her regurgitating or biting you in the face? Regurgitating. Well, <laughs> I would prefer to be regurgitated on and bit in the face, but I wasn't concerned that that was going okay. to happen. And actually, what we've found is that the easiest way to get a nice Colombian tegu is to buy an Argentine tegu instead. And. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Good question, though. We will cover them. <laughs>